Good afternoon and welcome to this ACT webinar on developments and opportunities in China's free trade zones. I'm James Lockyer, Development Director here at the ACT. Uh, and just before we start, I thought I'd explain some technical points about our webinar setup. There's a menu bar across the bottom that allows you to open various windows, and you can move these around your screen, resize them, or minimize them. The green button with a question mark on it down there is for help if you have any technical difficulties. And another button there opens the Q&A window. You can send in questions by typing in that Q&A window. Don't wait until the end to send in your questions. Just send them in as they occur to you, and we will deal with them at the end of the presentations. And our practice is that we don't disclose any names. I should add that a recording of this webinar will be available on the ACT website in two days' time, along with a separate copy of all the slides. We're delighted to have three speakers, one here in London and two based in Shanghai today, who have a wealth of experience in developing China's commercial infrastructure and facilitating both inward and outward investment. Thomson Reuters have sponsored today's webinar, so on behalf of us all, can I thank them for that support. Foreigners are familiar with China's liberalization agenda, particularly regarding renminbi becoming a truly convertible international currency and the opening up of internal markets for foreign exchange and interest rates. The pace of change is huge, and one particular initiative has been the establishment of the Shanghai Free Trade Zones 18 months ago, which cre have created a pilot environment for testing reforms, while immediately facilitating investment and trade between China and abroad. And that's what we'll be hearing today, uh, sorry, we'll be hearing about today from Yang Du, head of China Desk at Thomson Reuters, and joining us from Shanghai, representing two of the state-owned enterprises managing the free trade zone initiatives, Eason Shi, who's senior manager, uh, Shanghai Waigao Chao Free Trade Zone United Development Company, and Jessica Zhang, senior manager, Shanghai UDC Business Consulting Company. We will then finish with discussion and as many of your questions as we can get through. So let's get started with Young. Young is head of China Desk at Thomson Reuters. He joined Thomson Reuters in 2008, focusing on sales, fixed income, and investment management business development. In 2012, he founded the Offshore Trading China program in Thomson Reuters, providing strategic insights and being instrumental in building the RMB community in London and beyond. As head of China Desk, Yang is responsible for Remimbi and China strategy overall, as well as China financial institutions in Europe and America. Thank you, James, and good afternoon, everyone. China's free trade zone practice at the moment receives huge attention from all over the world. I think our purpose today is to help every single participant today to understand how to tighten your business into the China's national strategy, first of all. Having said that, the free trade zone exercise in China is a nationwide practice. However, it's rather new. It started from 2013, August, receiving a strong support from State Council and Premier Li Keqiang. To yesterday, China now have about four free trade zones officially set up, among which Shanghai taking the lead. But to understand the general environment, why this is the moment for China to actually conduct such a free trade zone exercise, as a matter of fact, it is called a pilot project for the nationwide financial reform. When we look at the past 10 years, China keep having the declining GDP growth in the past, and it's expected in 2015 to have a below 7% GDP growth. Facing the both internal and ex external pressures, China now has to seek alternative way to develop a nationwide reform strategy. 
And that is translated into two main aspects. One is the internal financial reform for the whole nationwide economic structure. Secondly, is to internationalize its currency. However, it is a difference for now compared to Japanese yen's internationalization or even U.S. dollar a number of years ago. The full convertibility of a Chinese yuan it is still a developing subject, among which it is the task for the PBOC to start opening a capital account first of all. Having said that, the PBOC's focus is to start from increasing the liquidity and the circulation of the Chinese currency to increase the usage of the Chinese currency in the international market, and then to consider the convertibility. When we look at the four free trade zones, each one of that has a different characteristics. Guangzhou free trade zone, which is around the bottom of the Chinese map, is on the border to the Hong Kong. Its main task is to push the deepening cooperation with Hong Kong and Macau. So while everyone looking at the free trade zone exercise and thinking about what's, what's the future position of the Hong Kong would be, that is the one key free trade zone to enhance uh, the competitiveness of Hong Kong and also to bring that traffic into the China via the free trade zone. Tianjin, which is one of the gateway in the north, will play a vital role of the logistics advantage and to push the northern economic development for the northern China. Fujian has a very dedicated task to improve the economic cooperation with China and the Taiwan. Among all four free trade zones, Shanghai has been selected as the leading free trade zone to pilot every single aspect of the free trade zone uh, policies, including the liberalization of the currency, the ease of the compliance and the regulatory environment, and also further to develop the negative list management. When we talk about the Chinese financial system, it is important to understand what are the core of the barriers stopping the international investors going into China freely. And the debate has been focusing on the three things mainly around the opening of the capital account. The three things I'd like to highlight, first of all, is the foreign direct investment. It is subject to approval and it is restric restricted for overseas investments directly into Chinese uh, fixed income and the stock market. Secondly, the Chinese residents and the Chinese state-owned companies are prohibited to own the foreign debt, i.e. they cannot buy the international issuer's bonds in China. The third is the Chinese capital market shall not be open to the foreign capital, that means you would have to apply for QV or RQV as a channel to invest into the Chinese interbank market. At this stage, these three things hasn't been completely freed up yet. However, the theory of the policy has been announced in the past two years by the launching of different free trade zones. So we start to see the free trade zones are actually working as a pilot to loose up some of these policies uh, restricting these three areas to stop international capital going into China. Among all the free trade zones, there's a strong reason why we highlight Shanghai. Um, I will leave more details for our fellow speakers to talk about uh, to talk about it. But it's important to understand the negative list from a positive way, if I may phrase it like that. Negative list is a traditional way to manage the international investment uh, to a country. It is meant to clarify uh, the certain areas that international investors are not meant to receive the national treatment. And there is a difference. However, it is also important to clarify what are the forbidden areas at this stage. It is uh, a critical progress by the free trade zone exercise, the original negative list was 190 items. 
to 2014, it's reduced to 139. By the end of today, actually, it's reduced further down to 122. Today, the Tianjin Free Trade Zone just uh, being announced and fully operate. The very first QDLP fund has set up in Tianjin Free Trade Zone. So without further ado, I will hand over Mike back to James and the fellow speakers to talk about details focusing on Shanghai Free Trade Zone. Thank you. Thanks very much, Young, for that extremely useful overview. Um, now uh, let's turn to Ethan and Jessica. Um, who will give us some further insights into the practicalities of the financial trade zone uh, initiatives. Um, we, we may have a slight problem on the comms with Shanghai, but we'll work around that in, over, over the next couple of minutes. Um, Ethan is a senior manager in the business development department of Shanghai Wai Gao Chao Free Trade Zone United Development Company. He has 10 years' experience in consulting services for greenfield investment projects in the Yangtze Delta, including incorporation, consulting, and enterprise operational consulting. Eason has helped a substantial number of foreign companies establish branches in mainland China. Jessica is a senior manager in the operation and marketing department at Shanghai UDC Business Consulting Company. She has over 10 years' experience in accounting, taxation, and foreign exchange policy consulting services. Jessica participated in building the outbound investment platform for the Shanghai Free Trade Zone and is responsible for outbound investment policy consulting services. So hopefully, Ethan is on the line and can give us his, uh, his thoughts. Over to you, Ethan. Thank you, James. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank, thank you for listening to, the, to my introduction of the China Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone. My company, Shanghai Wai Gaochao Free Trade Zone United Development Company Limited, is a state-owned development company of China Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone. We are in charge for the develop, development of seven square kilometers of land territory, and we own more than two million square meters of property in the zone. Just yesterday, our China central government have promulgated a new decree that is approved the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone to expand, expand it with three new areas. In this slide, you can see the space is about 28 square kilometers of the Shanghai China Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone. But after the expansion, the area will be more than 120 kilo, square kilometers. And the new area is Lu Jiazui Financial Zone and Jinqiao Development Zone and the Zhangjiang High Tech Zone. The China Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone is approved by the China Central Government in September of 2013. So till nowadays, there, is, there are more than 23,000 companies established in the zone, and inside there are more than 40, uh, more than 47 banks in in the in the area, and we are have more than 300,000 people working in the zone. We have the area of the China Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone has three main industry. The first main industry that is for trading because here is a custom supervised area. So um, about 65% are trading companies in the free trade zone. And the second majority is service companies. So these are the brand new industry in the zone because our zone are opening in the policy for foreign investors in service trade. So there is about 21% companies are service industry. And the others, 14% companies are referred to the multinational 
company's headquarters in the zone are referred to the R&D companies and the manufacturing companies. We call these are the traditional industries in the zone. So we see the other chart that is about 10% of the companies are the foreign invested company, and the others are domestic invest invested companies. The China Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone are reformed in four main cores. So these four main cores is first one that is the investment management, and the second one that is service trading, the third one that is the trade supervision. And the last one that is the most important is the finance innovation. Regarding to the investment management, we have created an wording in China that is the negative list. The negative list is a list made by the government for the company they do business in the zone. If their business is not listed in the negative list, they can be treated as a domestic company without Without any uh, without any uh, limitation, if you like a foreign invested company, maybe you need to apply in the approval or or some, something that is the negative list. And we also can see the list is shortened by the government every year. So in year 2013, there is about 152 items which is list on the negative list. And the new version of 2014, there is only about 110. So we believe the negative list will be shortened year by year. The service trade is another one core which is reform in the free trade zone. So as we know, China is limited for foreign investors investment in some service trade industry. But in the China Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone, there is about six affairs opened for foreign investors. Uh, uh, the first one that is the financial services, uh, so which are my which I m m marked in red, that is the financial leasing, which is very interesting for foreign investors. Second one, that is the shipping services. Shipping services is also the majority business in China, in Shanghai. The third one is the business services. The value-added telecommunication business attract many investors to start their business in the zone. The fourth one, that is the professional services, the professional services such, such as the legal services, such as the travel agencies, they are, are open to the foreign investors in the zone. And the fifth one, that is the cultural services. So the foreign investors are allowed to set up joint venture companies in the free trade zone, which is engaged in the cultural business, like the training for technicians. The last one, that is the social services. The medical services is among in these fields. So the foreign investor can open in the wholly owned foreign invested uh, hospitals in, in the zone. As we know, the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone is a custom supervised area. To support the development of the zone, the custom office has issued 14 reform policies to which is which is targeted to facilitate trading business in the zone. So the main points is including the inbound first, declaration later, safe transport, transportation for goods within zones, manual verification with work order, bounded demonstration and business, maintenance bid service for overseas and domestic market. Now we go to the most important core center for the reform in the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone, that is, that is the financial area. So as we just mentioned, Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone is expanded with three new zones in Shanghai. So the these four zones has their own future development target. So the Lu Jiazui is the core area for financial zone and the Shanghai World Export Zone, and the Shanghai Zhangjiang High Tech Zone, is which they are financial services for the high-tech business developing. 
the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone is mainly for the, mainly reform in the financial area for offshore business. Jinqiao Development Zone, they are they will development their financial area for advanced manufacturing. Recently, the Shanghai, uh, the People's Bank of China, Shanghai branch has issued 30 new policies, so which is further development for the financial innovation in the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone. Among them, which which is attract many companies to establish their company inside the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone to set up the capital account, which is in uh, in terms of the uh, cash pool. So there are two main cash pool. The first one that is the RMB cash pool, and the second one that is the uh, foreign currency cash pool. So nowadays there are about more than uh, 60 companies they set up their foreign currency cash pool, and the, the, there is about 140 companies that have set up their RMB cash pool. So with the cash pool, the company can remittance and the rev revenue the foreign currency or RMB freely without the foreign exchange control by the China government. And in the traditional uh, free trade zone, we have a function. So that is for the reform in in the trading business. But nowadays, the innovation of the financial area allow the company to make use of the policy that is I just mentioned, the cash pool. So nowadays, we believe the future development of the zone will further development in the two-way opening up in the financial industry, for example, the cross-border of RMB cash pool. An outbound investment which attracts many domestic companies to setting up their holding companies in the free trade zone. If we compare the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone and the other places outside the Free trade, uh, outside pilot free trade zone, but in mainland China, the difference is the company, uh, if they want to make the investment in UK, it only takes five days for them to file in every, all the procedures and they can remittance the capital to the overseas project if they have a holding company in the free trade zone. But outside free trade zone, they need to apply in the approval from the Reform and the Development Committee, the approval from the Commercial Bureau, and approval from the State Administration of Foreign Exchange. All of, of these procedures will take no less than four months' time, and they uh, also take the risk of fa failure in the application. So that is the biggest advantage for the companies to set up their holding company in the Shanghai Free Trade Zones. So till nowadays, there is about 280 investment projects. They make use of these advantages and remittance their capital to overseas countries. So among them, there are about four projects invested in UK, but we also believe the company, the investment in the BVI and the Cayman Islands will have some, maybe some portion of these projects will finally investment in UK. So, and the, as I just mentioned just, la, just yesterday, the Shanghai government has approved the expansion of the free trade zone with 20, 25 points reform in Shanghai pilot free trade zone. So among the, these 25 po points, there's one point referred to the tax treatment for the outbound investment. So we believe the, the income tax rate will be lower if the company can make use of a holding company in the free trade zone for their outbound investment. And th there is a case for the investment through the 
Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone, that is the Honey Capital. They buy Pizza Express via their Free Trade Zone touring company. So the purchase is completed in July 2014. So that is all for my presentation t- today. Thank you for your listening. Ethan, thanks so much.、Uh, that was that was really interesting. I think a really good,、uh, a really a, a really good sort of summary of, of particularly what、uh, the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone、uh, can offer uh, businesses. Um, We're now open for questions, so please、um, do、uh, send your questions in. I mean, I've got a few of my own.、Um, one that's come in, which I think probably is one for you, Ethan. Actually,、um, is along the lines of what what level of physical presence is required in the free trade zone. For example, is it sufficient just to have a registered address in the free trade zone, or do you need something? You, do you need to see something more? Uh, for the presence in the free trade zone, I believe that is for a.、Uh, you need to have a paper office at least. So the paper office may be an office room, but maybe also some part of a warehouse. But a re- registered address is necessary for your presence in the free trade zone. Okay.、Um, I mean, I had a sort of follow up to that, which was how. What's the best way of Integrating, or indeed of using, a free trade zone presence to integrate with other parts of your business elsewhere in China.、Um, you know, potentially you might have manufacturing sites、um, elsewhere in China, but decide well, actually, what we'll do is we'll run the holding company in the free trade zone. Is that sort of thing possible? Yes. It is, it is possible because the free trade zone companies is China. We are regarded as they are is a China-based company, but outside the custom supervision of China. So it is the the beneficial is you can do in the foreign exchange, which is regarded like a foreign company. So so I believe it is. Okay, so, so basically, your free trade zone company can be a bridge to the rest of your operations in China. Yes, the, as I mentioned, they are regarded as a China-based company. The company in the free trade zone can do business with the other company in mainland China. Yeah, yeah, okay.、Um, we've had another question in,、um, which again, I think is probably another one for you, Ethan.、Um, apparently.、Um, Well, someone's written in to say that his business still sees many Chinese company、um, asking for payment in U.S. dollars and being hesitant to receive payments in renminbi.、Um, and have you any idea what may, might be behind this? And I suppose also,、um, could those companies be persuaded to take their, you know, to take payments in effectively in local currency? So. Be、frankly, I'm not very familiar with this question, but I believe that is because the internationalization of RMB is in progress. So, if you are doing the business, for for example, a China free trade zone company doing the business with a company in Hong Kong or in Malaysia, because they they have RMB offshore banks. In this location, so I believe the company is willing to do the trading. Uh, in RMB, but if they are doing the business in some countries, no, there is no offshore RMB market of banks, so it is will be not、uh, easier to do the business with RMB. So they will、uh, to to make the payments in US dollar. Okay, okay. I think Jan, you've got you had some thoughts on that as well. Yeah, the convenience of the payments really、uh, at the moment by the individual companies actually. Fragmented into different com-、uh, provinces and cities,、uh, it is not done centrally from designated、uh, area like free trade zone. So, i.e., the factory farm and some of the uh, uh, the export uh, subsidiaries um, were not uh, uh, paid out in uh, uh, renminbi clearly for some local government. 
so that uh, has been identified as one of the main phenomena for some of the Chinese companies not uh, receiving Yunmin B. Uh, but one benefit of the free trade zone, because you can leverage on the two-way RMB pool, that will be a designated policy in that region, and that policy will be clarified uh, if you would demand payment in Yunmin B. Okay, excellent. Thanks. Um, got raft of questions coming in now. Um, there's one here. I think again. I think it's got, this is all Eason's territory. I'm afraid. Um, one about um, if you have a, a holding company, uh, a Chinese holding company in the free trade zone, does that make any benefits to making dividend payments um, to? Uh, I'm assuming it's an, an, an overseas uh, holding company, you know, further up the chain. Does that does it make dividend payments any easier? Oh, I think the question that is I just mentioned that maybe uh, in the future we have 24, 25 points reform, which is promulgated by the government in, in, uh, yesterday. So it mentioned the holding company in the free trade zone if they do in the outbound investment, dividend back to to the Shanghai free trade zone company can enjoy lower income tax. So. Uh, I, I believe there is no additional treatment for the free trade zone company. They can enjoy the dividend payment headquarter in overseas country and enjoy the lower tax rate. I, yeah. I don't yeah. believe it will be. Uh, so, um, okay. Um, there's a lot on woo, tax. Um, there's a, there's a Query on cash pooling here. Um, what cash? Are you aware of any uh, cash pooling products available to pool cash in mainland China with um, cash pools elsewhere, for instance, Singapore or Hong Kong? Is it, is it possible to do this? From um, the, the Guangdong Tianhai area, which is exactly on the border against the Hong Kong. Uh, if you set up a business in there, you could directly access Hong Kong offshore CNH in uh, Shenzhen. Uh, so that has been a quite exceptional uh, policy to support businesses who uh, are going to set up the local presence in Shenzhen, so which is the Tianhai free trade zone. Um, it's just the one part of that. So that policy actually started from Shanghai. So if you are based in Shanghai, you could also access the, the offshore uh, uh, rate, first of all, and it really doesn't matter where your money from because you use the custodian bank, it depends on where the fund actually based. Very often, uh, uh, that is Hong Kong or Singapore. Yeah, I, I actually had a question sort of along those lines was sort of if you decide to locate in the free trade zone, who can you bank with? Well, as um, First of all, the international banks, they are opening the uh, local branches in the free trade zones already. That's a particularly focused on the cross-border uh, trade and the trade financing uh, business, first of all. Uh, so for the international banks, um, with or without uh, local branches based in China, in the domestic uh, Chinese area, you would be able to uh, move your capital around the border by the free trade zone, first of all. Secondly, which is the state-owned Chinese banks, for, um, uh, like Bank of China, ICBC, those banks, um, they they meant to uh, facilitate the cross-border trade as well. They could use uh, their kind of um, uh, product uh, via the FX or from mm -hmm. some of the services they provide. Uh, so usually they trade either with Shanghai or Hong Kong, depends yeah. on which direction you want to go. Yeah, so basically being located um, either in Shanghai Free Trade Zone or, or anywhere else, you as a business, you will be you can be fully supported and likely by a member of your banking group, but at least by a you know a fully capable international bank. Not every single cap, uh, international bank open local branch mm -hmm. in the domestic uh, Chinese territory. However, the Free Trade Zone uh, is one of uh, uh, the more free area for the international banks to actually consider that yeah. option. Yeah, and the, and the more people who want to work in the free trade zone, the more banks will find it worthwhile to open up 
capability and branches there, I presume. Oh, yes. There'll be, if we visualize, will be probably like a Canary Wharf, but just in the larger size. People do travel in in the morning uh, at Shanghai and the Tianjin. Now we started to see more uh, labels can allocate into that soon. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just test out the, the tax query here. I think this, again, might be one for Ethan or Jessica. Um, what are the tax implications of companies um, in the free trade zone compared to companies out, located outside it? Are, are there any particular tax advantages, disadvantages, or implications that, that people considering uh, locating themselves there should, should be aware of? Hello. Uh, I, I have just uh, discussed with Jessica, and uh, he told me that if there is no actually no difference for the tax implication of the company in the free trade zone compared to the company outside free trade zone. So okay. The China tax, there is no. Yeah. So so, and, and I think that's a really good point. So the free trade zones are literally about free trade. It's not about trying to pick up any tax benefit. Um, and furthermore, it means that you don't have to think through any, if you like, additional tax implications from being located there. It's simply designed to be an easier place to do business. Yes, I t totally I agree with you. Okay, thanks. I mean, just on sort of just following up the ease of business, um, ease of business thread, I think maybe young for you. Um, in a way, how easy is it to take advantage of the free trade zones? Because looking at statistics, I mean, admittedly it was outbound st uh, investment, but you know, you've got the sort of the neighboring Asia Pacific countries on the list. You've got the big tax havens and you've got the United States. And after that, hardly anyone so far seems to be using it. But it sounds to me as if you know, anyone who's either considering doing business in China or is already doing business in China should be looking very hard at setting up in a free trade zone and taking advantage of, of, of what's on offer. So how, how easy is it to do that? Um, the first of all is about uh, rules. How do you want to play your local uh, uh, business in China? As Ethan pointed out, some of the holding companies have been targeted uh, or welcome to set up their branch in the free trade zone uh, to have more kind of heavier uh, capital operations. But I think the implication for the small and medium-sized uh, business, which is about to go into China um, without actually go too deep into the inland, unless you have a uh, already chosen destination for manu manufacturing or certain area, free trade zones would be the one area. Because for one very simple reason, the shift of the capital in and outbound will be a lot more easier and free. So. Uh, if you could be very open about some of the concerns about shifting capital uh, from China and outside. In the free trade zone, uh, especially for small and medium-sized companies, capital cap, that wouldn't be a major issue. Okay. Ethan, have you got anything to add to that? I don't have uh, – I, I agree with Yang, so I don't have any additional comments. Okay. Um, again, again, this might be slightly specific, but if you're thinking of, you know, if you want to find out more, who should who should the corporate get in touch with? Who should the treasurer get in touch with to to follow this up? Yeah, so, uh, from my point. Are you there, Ethan? Go ahead. Okay. So from my point of view, if the uh, if the company want to uh, follow up this uh, question, so follow follow up their, their business in the free trade zone, they can contact with the free trade zone government. So uh, as I mentioned, I I can re maybe in the in the slide we can release the website of the free trade zone government. You can get many help. From the website, it have policy information. They have uh, investment uh, investment e e instruction function on the government website. And secondly, we are welcome if the 
the company their interest in the free trade zone, they can keep in touch with our site because we are a development company in the free trade zone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just to add one thing I noticed from attendee list, I saw the chief representative of Shanghai Invest is uh, listening to this course. Uh, it's me, uh, Yan Pan. She's based in London. I would recommend to get in touch with her. I think the communication channel could be either via ACT or mm -hmm. Thomson Reuters. We're more than happy to uh, to facilitate. Sure. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, we've probably got time for one more quick question. Um, I think possibly one for you, actually, Jan. It occurs to me that the free trade zone concept is um, it's almost a case of it's almost a case of use it or lose it. Get in there, make use of it. You know, it's leading edge, but it isn't bleeding edge. There is experience there. What would your recommendation be? Well, if we look at into the uh, late 70s when Shenzhen was firstly appointed as an economic uh, pilot city first of all, as the border city against uh, uh, Hong Kong. Uh, now is just uh, another moment for uh, uh, free trade zones to conduct a nationwide economic opening up policies. Those four free trade zones are meant to test out if the local uh, practice and the policies are going to work nationwide in the whole China. So some of these policies will firstly have water testing uh, meaning, first of all, and also especially for the small and medium-sized business going into those free trade zones, it is important to notice that you don't have to inject your actual capital in there. It is on claim base that you would, it's more about a commitment that would uh, eventually inject into, certain, let's say, a couple of million pounds capital in your business there. Um, so they, they actually look into your business activity first to try to support you uh, to get set up up and running, first of all, and then to actually help you to go deeper into China via the free trade zone. Yeah. So we see that goodwill from a, a nationwide perspective. And bear in mind, policymakers are also uh, uh, testing the best of policy to support so. Uh, one uh, implication is to see the, the, the for the shrinking of the negative list. So the sincerity is there, clear and yeah. bold. Yeah. Uh, there's a certain level of education to regulators as well to teach them what is your business need and what they need to step up for you. Sure. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much, Yang. And I think we're about to run out of time. Um, so um, time has probably come to wrap up. I think the key point is that the free trade zones are there. Shanghai, in particular, has a huge variety of opportunity on offer. Obviously, um, uh, a good and growing capability to host businesses of many different descriptions and the infra infrastructure to support that. So I think, you know, if you're interested in growing your business in China, the free trade zones offer a clear opportunity for you to get ahead. Um, my thanks to our presenters and to Thomson Reuters for their sponsorship. Thank you, too, for everyone who, in, who joined today's session. I'm sorry if we didn't reach your question within our allotted time. Um, as I mentioned at the start, we'll be putting up a recording of this webinar on the ACT website, along with the presentations in a couple of days' time, and we'll be sending you all the link to that. Looking forward to the rest of the year. Uh, we've got uh, another webinar next week on foreign exchange. We've got our three big conferences coming up. We've got the UK conference in Manchester in May. We've got the Middle East conference in Dubai in June. And we've got the Asia conference in Hong Kong in September. Uh, and at least in that Hong Kong conference, I suspect some of, many of the issues we've been discussing here will probably come up again. So I look forward to seeing some, many of you uh, at some stage in person um, during the year. Thank you very much for listening. If you can spare a moment to provide some feedback on the webinar, we would be very grateful. Just select the feedback widget in red from the bottom bar, and the facility to do this will remain open for a short while after the webinar ends. 
both from all of us here, thank you and goodbye.